A recent Supreme Court ruling is potentially very bad news for all DEI programs, reportedly sending those in favor of them, let alone companies actively forcing them upon their employees, such as Disney, into a hissy fit. But is this much ado about nothing, or could this ruling really lead to meaningful change? Let's find out. I first saw this on X, where Freedom Piper posted as follows, and I quote, Breaking, in a landmark 9-0 ruling on Wednesday that you will never hear about in the media, the US Supreme Court has undercut all DEI-based discrimination, sending the Marxists into a tissy. The US Supreme Court's ruling that a St. Louis police sergeant can sue over a job transfer she claims was discriminatory lays the foundation for legal action against employers who push discrimination against white people in job hiring, work assignment, and promotion. That's right, those diversity-preferred job postings, the practice of passing over whites for promotions, discriminatory job transfers, pushing unfair diversity trainings, etc. All of these are now legally actionable. The ruling was championed by human rights groups as an enormous win for workers, but has lawyers for companies like Disney warning that it could have a chilling effect on employers' diversity initiatives. Disney's pale and male is stale policy is a prime example. Disney has allegedly used it to drive out white animators by giving them the worst assignments, even though they have the most experience, skill, and seniority, in order to make the job humiliating enough that they quit, which many of them have done. Here, I'd just like to chime in that, as we have covered before, based on Film Threat's original scoops, it is male animators that Disney have it in for, as their quota is 50% female representation among animators. But since the majority of those male animators are also white, it amounts to the same, I guess. Anyway, moving on. The same companies argue that there is good discrimination and bad discrimination, that white people should be purposely disadvantaged to pave the way for diversity. And here I'd like to chime in that across the board, that does indeed seem to be the trend. The lawyer stated that the decision will complicate DEI programs and limit their ability to discriminate against white men. The Supreme Court torpedoed these claims, reasserting that everyone is equal in the eyes of the law. Further, the court has established a relatively low standard for bringing discrimination cases. The victim need not suffer actual harm. An employee only must show some harm under the terms of their employment, and that harm need not be material, substantial, or serious. The decision makes it much easier for workers to sue over discriminatory practices. This is a big win for equality. All of that sounds fantastic, of course, but are Disney really shaking in their boots already? Well, let's begin with looking at the Supreme Court ruling itself, which Freedom Piper helpfully linked to. And the case itself has nothing to do with either Disney or DEI directly, though it is indeed like it was first posited here. The background is that Sergeant Jatonia Claiborne Muldrew maintains that her employer, the St. Louis Police Department, transferred her from one job to another because she is a woman. From 2008 till 2017, Muldrow worked as a plainclothes officer in the department's specialized intelligence division. In 2017, the new Intelligence Division commander asked to transfer Muldrow out of the unit so he could replace her with a male police officer. Against Muldrow's wishes, the department approved the request and reassigned Muldrow to a uniform job elsewhere in the department. While Muldrow's rank and pay remained the same in the new position, her responsibilities, perks, and schedule did not. After the transfer, Muldrow no longer worked with high-ranking officials on the departmental priorities lodged in the intelligence division, instead supervising the day-to-day -day activities of neighborhood patrol officers. She also lost access to an unmarked take-home vehicle and had a less regular schedule involving weekend shifts. 
Muldrow brought this Title VII suit to challenge the transfer. The Supreme Court weighed in and ruled in favor of Sergeant Muldrow, and the detail of that ruling has implications far beyond this case. The opinion of the court states, Title VII makes it unlawful for an employer to fail or refuse to hire or to discharge any individual, or otherwise to discriminate against any individual with respect to his compensation, terms, conditions, or privileges of employment, because of such individual's race, color, religion, sex, or national origin. Muldrow's suit, as described above, alleges that she was transferred to a lesser position because she is a woman. That transfer, as both parties agree, implicated terms and conditions of Muldrow's employment, changing nothing less than the what, where, and when of her police work. So, the statutory language applicable to this case prohibits discriminating against an individual with respect to the terms or conditions of employment because of that individual's sex. That language requires Muldrow to show that the transfer brought about some disadvantageous change in an employment term or condition. As we saw earlier though, she had retained the same pay and rank, which is why she lost in lower courts, because Sergeant Muldrow hadn't been disadvantaged enough. That brings us to the heart of the matter, because what the Supreme Court says goes, and the Supreme Court said, The transfer must have left her worse off, but need not have left her significantly so, and Muldrow's allegations, if properly preserved and supported, meet that test with room to spare. Recall her principal allegations. She was moved from a plain clothes job in a prestigious specialized division, giving her substantial responsibility over priority investigations and frequent opportunity to work with police commanders. She was moved to a uniform job supervising one district's patrol officers, in which she was less involved in high visibility matters and primarily performed administrative work. Title VII prohibits making a transfer based on sex, with the consequences Muldrow described. And that, then, is the crux of this matter. On its own, this case has nothing to do with either Disney or DEI, but this ruling sets a legal precedent which has implications for anyone who has been demoted, transferred to a lesser position even if it was with the same pay, or even let go because they didn't belong to a preferred group within the DEI doctrine. Because that's the dirty secret of DEI, no more seats are added to the table. Those who already had seats were kicked off of theirs to make room for someone more desirable. And those who are now undesirable, i.e. pale, male and stale, now have legal precedent on which they can base a lawsuit, or even a class action lawsuit. That's the really important bit here. This ruling won't end DEI programs because it has nothing to do with DEI programs. But anyone whose careers have been adversely affected by DEI, even if it was just a little bit, now have grounds to sue. And with that door open, if enough companies now are sued and end up having to pay damages as a direct consequence of their DEI initiatives, that in turn is going to affect the future of such programs. And keep in mind, however much you may hear about DEI, it is not in fact legally mandatory. ESG, DEI, and yes, their T1000 upgrade, Bridge, all follow from stakeholder capitalism, which is what the WEF wants to force upon the world. But technically, stakeholder capitalism is just an ideology or a recommendation, if you will. It is not legally binding. But any potential future ruling against DEI will be, because DEI practices are blatantly racist. Indeed, Bloomberg Law weighed in, flat out stating that the Supreme Court just complicated employer DEI programs, because now the bar to sue and actually win has been lowered so much that DEI programs may be very hard to defend, and maybe these programs shouldn't be defended. Case in point, even the Pulitzer-winning screenwriter David Mamey recently referred to Hollywood's DEI initiatives as fascist totalitarianism. 
So, to those of you listening who have been the victims of DEI programs, and I know there's a few of you, now may be a good time to lawyer up. Let me know your thoughts on this in the comments.